welcome back to my channel i know we haven't had this sit down in a long time the last time i sat down with the camera and shot a video was when i was doing how i got into medical school video and then after that um, i had a video with a couple of friends whereby we discussed things that we knew before coming into medical school and then we had the two vlogs that i did which were yeah very very awesome in terms of quality and, and in terms of the content as well so today i thought ah oh, let me just take the camera again and sit down and just do a get to know me tag so uh, i went on instagram and on twitter and i asked you guys to send me some questions that you would like to know about me and yeah i have some here on my phone so let's just get into this video and please don't forget to like comment share and subscribe so yeah let's get into this get to know me video so the first question is um how old are you well i'm 27 years old i was born on the 24th of october 1981 i know people get shocked all the time i know i look young right this jeans oh i, I got all of this for my dad <laughs> so the next question says uh what would be your perfect holiday destination so for me i would say that uh, because i'm a peaceful person i remember this year i said to a friend of mine that um i wanted peace for my baby <laughs> and then she went and then she asked her mother she's like mother so what does Tapu mean when he says he wants peace for his birthday <laughs> so for me i would say that a peaceful place a place that i would get to and i would get chance to think um to just enjoy the place so that would be a great a very very nice holiday destination for me um there must be water but please just keep me away from the animals because i'm really not a fan of animals um and yeah so for me a peaceful place um with the water i mean I, I turn up during the year, so during a holiday, I really do not want to turn up. So, yeah. Favorite drink? I would say definitely, without a doubt, gin and lemonade. <laughs> if my friend and I, whenever we are out, we always make sure that we get some gin and lemonade. So, if you see me out and you want to buy me a drink, best believe gin and lemonade, chances are I will take it. Um, the best and worst moments of medical school yet. Wow. So for this one, I would definitely say at the moment, um, some of the worst um, things about being here is the competitiveness of this area. Um, because now the problem is medical schools take number ones students from their schools. So you get all these number ones and they put them in one place and it's a mess everyone's still trying to outshine each other and some people would throw you under the bus and all of that so that's really one of the things that i really really don't like about being in medical school because for me because now i'm older and i'm wiser um i know that what really matters is us making it out my us making it out of here together and then making sure that we give our patients the best possible care possible. So this whole thing of trying to be number one and all of that, it really, it really is really not something that is worth killing ourselves over. Some of the best moments here, for me personally, all my friends and colleagues will tell you, I go to classes <laughs> and I sit in front. So like that should tell you a lot about how much I love and I'm invested in this course. So for me, sometimes I would be in class and I would just zone out and I would be like, wow, I'm really, really here. And I would really like take in the moment, the fact that I'm given this opportunity to learn about the human body. I'm given this opportunity to touch other people's lives. It's, it's beautiful and sometimes it's overwhelming, but I'm really starting to enjoy the process and to allow the process to take place. I mean, it's a lot of work, but um, learning does happen. I mean, we don't learn at the same speed, but eventually we will all learn. So for me, I've had some nice moments in the dissection halls whereby I had that uh -huh moment and everything just fell into place um, in the skills lab, uh, my interactions with other students. So there's really, really loads and loads of good moments in medical school. Also, um, the next question says, what was your favorite, uh, no, what was your inspiration to keep pushing to get into medical school? Well, um, for one, I've always known that I wanted to become a doctor, even from a young age. Um, I've always said to my parents, my family that 
I wanted to like I want to become a doctor to my teachers and the next thing is that they all believed in my dreams and for that that really kept me going because um no one that I've ever spoken to ever said to me no you're not going to be able to make it as a doctor because of, I was always seen as um, a gifted learner and smart and all of that um, but I, I must admit that um, that alone wasn't going to be able to sustain me even during those days when I was doing BSc um, trying to get into medical school so for me I would say that one of the things that really really kept me going was knowing why I want to do this because um, I don't think one day I'm going to be the best surgeon or the best uh, physician because that's not where I'm invested in. For me, I feel like one day I'm going to get this degree and I'm going to go back home and I'm going to serve my people in the villages and uh, that is what is important to me. I know like um, I will be making real life differences to my people because growing up I was surrounded by death so much. I remember in 2001 I lost my grandfather and then in 2002 um, I lost my aunt and uncle within the same week. And a month later, we lost my grandmother. And I felt like um, us as a family, we felt my grandmother in that we didn't recognize her pain, in that she had lost her husband the previous year. And now this year, she's losing um, two kids within the same week. And then, uh, wow, that could have been very overwhelming for her. And that could have really affected her deeply. And we failed to recognize that. So it is in those moments with the fact that um, our people in the villages are the most vulnerable and the people who s are from the cities are more likely to go back to the cities. So now it is up to us, the people from the villages, to empower ourselves to push and study these degrees and go back and serve our people. So for me, really, that kept me going, knowing the end goal, knowing what I want to achieve with this uh, degree and knowing that the good grades were there and uh, really believing and keeping the faith and knowing that wow one day i'm definitely gonna get in i'm definitely gonna get this degree and i'm definitely going to go back and become the best rural medicine specialist so yeah <laughs> so that really yeah kept me going um the next question says why are you so amazing sweet so let me tell you my dad i hear that my dad was very very kind and um my mom was also very very um nice so you take these two kind people and then they produce an offspring me definitely gonna get amazingness and awesomeness all around so i think yeah my parents are to blame for all this awesomeness um okay yeah um, the next question says so where would you have loved to study medicine if you didn't go to studies um i would say definitely i would be at vets university probably i won't be training like the vets medical students <laughs> but i would definitely be there because i've always uh, said to myself that I will live in Cape Town and I will study at Vets. But now that I'm studying in uh, Cape Town, I guess I'll have to live in Vets for a while so I might just go to Vets and specialize there one day. So it's still possible. But um, other than that, I think I would have gone to any other medical school in South Africa. It really doesn't matter for me. I feel like we have some of the best programs in the country. So whether it's Sefako Mahato, whether it's uh, Taikis, whether it's UK Zetana, wherever the wind blows, I would have went. Um, the next question is, do you have any piercings? If no, would you do a nipple piercing? Well, Firstly, I don't have any piercings. Secondly, I think I'm the type of person that would, that would get <laughs> those nipple piercings. So maybe, maybe one day, you just give me an idea. One day, I might just walk up with some nipple piercings. So be on the lookout for that. Um, the next question says, do you have any tattoos? Currently, I don't have any tattoos. I'm thinking of getting two on my clavicles. Um, I want to get my mother's date of birth and death on one side and my father's on the other side 
Um, so it's in the pipeline. I've been thinking about it. I spoke to my aunt about it and then she was like, um, I really don't think you should get tattoos because patients wouldn't want a doctor with um, tattoos. And I'm just there like, no, I don't really need my patient's permission to get tattoos on my body. I mean, they will, they just have to deal and know that their doctor is cool like that. Yeah, right. So one day, one day when I have them, I will show you guys and be like, there. Yeah, but currently there's no tattoo anyway um the next question says um what aspects of your life needs tremendous improvement right now definitely my bank balance guys being a student the, the our bank balance is, is crap i'm broke beginning of the month mid month end of the month it's not cute there's nothing cute about it so definitely my bank balance needs some improvements right now um, the next question, are you a dog or a cat person? Let's just say, keep the animals away and give me kids. I'm a kids person, so I'm more inclined to have babies than to have pets. So I think my kids one day will have pets, then by default I'll be their grandfather. So, yeah. <laughs> ah, let's move right along. The next question says, are you more likely to avoid conflict or engage it head on? Well, let me just say that conflict is very makes me very uncomfortable. I try to avoid it, but now as I'm getting older and wiser, I realize that sometimes you, you just need to have it. You need to have that moment to engage with the next person. Um, it, it, but it must be in a respectable, man, a respectable manner. And sometimes you just need to allow both parties to cool off before that. So yeah, I would, definitely I would engage in uh, conflict cautiously though. Are you a fan of any sports team? Well, let me tell you one thing. I was a fan of Kaiser Chiefs. Look at our lives right now. It's a mess. They are failing to win anything. So, teams right now? No, sorry. I don't want any disappointments. And you see what Bafana Bafana is also doing? Mm -mm. So, for now, uh, uh, we are putting them aside for, for at the moment. Um, what inspires you? This is a very good question. For me, people inspire me, guys. Um, it is so refreshing to sit down with a person and listen to them speaking about their dreams. You, you, you see the look in their eyes, um, the joy that comes with it, and you get so inspired. Um, I get inspired so much by people um, going after their dreams, by medical students not... Uh, confining them to this medical space only by having other interests. So for that, for me, I've got so much faith in humanity that people continue to inspire me each and every day. It's amazing. Um, what has required the most courage of you in your life so far? To be quite honest, uh, because my dad died when I was two years old. So when I lost my mom, when I was 16, um, that really, um, broke me like I felt like I felt like I had lost a part of me so for me to pick up the pieces and to glue myself together and keep on keeping on really that really um, required a lot for me and I had to do a lot of healing and I had to do a lot of accepting and all of that so yeah that really I would say that it required the most for me as a person um, it says who's your favorite musician well since I'm a global citizen I can confidently say that my favorite musician is Beyonce and I have the honor to be with to be with her on the 2nd of December so I'm looking forward to that locally I would say definitely Kelly Kumano she's got best vocals like that girl has a voice and a half. It's amazing. And Casper Yovis, I really believe in his talent and I see his hard work and the effort that he puts in his performances. I also like him as well. So definitely I would say Beyonce internationally, locally, we've got Kelly Kumalo and Casper Yovis. Ah. Next question, it says, uh, what are your best characteristics? Guys, I'm just such a calm person. I'm very respectable. I'm very sweet. I'm, I'm that one person that if you need help, 
I'm the person that you need to call. Trust me, I'll come and help you. I know it, it, it may sound boastful and stuff, but I feel like sometimes you need to tell yourself that actually I am so great. <laughs> so yeah, I'll say I'm very respectable. Like I was respectful. I respect other people. Um, my emotional intelligence is becoming better and better as I get older. So now I'm more aware of the things that I say to other people and uh, I try to engage with others respect respectfully. And yeah, uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. Some of them I did answer them here, they like repeating themselves. So the next question says, what scares you about aging, guys, incontinence? The fact that now I'll be peeing on myself as this old man. The fact that now I'm going to be depending on other people, that scares me a lot. I mean, dying used to scare me, but now I've made peace with it because I know it's the part of life, the part of our journey and all of that. So for me, really, because uh, one thing that you need to understand about us people who lose our parents at a young age is that we end up becoming too dependent on ourselves. Like we too independent and all of that so for us to become dependent on other people it's very difficult it's something that we need to do on a daily basis to teach ourselves to be like okay I need to teach myself to depend on others so for me I feel like that is going to be one of the hardest thing for me going old is depending on others so I think by age 70 75 or 80 I'm gonna be like a peace out I'm checking out you guys I'm going to like leave you you guys can see what you guys can do that like, now I'll be gone um, the next question is says how difficult is it for you to be honest even when your words may be hateful or unpopular guys let me tell you one thing I am one person there's a fine line between being honest being bland and being rude and sometimes people play the lines and become very rude and say no I was just being real I was just being honest no we don't break other people and claim that no we are just being honest no because words provide meaning and uh, with words, words can build or can break people. So for me, it's, those are the things that really, really, I need to be very aware of as I'm doing them. So I'm more inclined to be honest, but I won't necessarily say things that I know are rude or they're going to hate you and all of that. Um, what is your most embarrassing moment, guys? Listen, so growing up, I used to go to camps. So this one time I was at this camp at the DST Tutuka camp. We were having debates in the evenings. So it was around 8 p.m. I go to give my speech and all of that. So I get there. The, the hall is full. There's letters from across the Northwest province. And I start, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And then I keep quiet. <laughs> and everyone starts laughing. And bro, I was so <laughs> embarrassed. And I'm like, how do I recover from this? I mean, who says good morning at 8 p.m.? Definitely Temple Wood. But wow. Then now they keep quiet. And I'm a bit thrown off because I'm like, okay, what do I say now from here moving forward? And I try to give my speech. But it was a mess. It was such a mess. I was thrown off. So when I didn't make it to the next round, I knew who I am. That good morning really messed up my chances. But you know what? Because then I was in grade 11. In grade 12, I went back to the same camp. The same people were there mostly. And you know what? I went there. I joined um, the debating team again. And guess who was the overall winner? It was me, it was I. I showed them that I went from good morning to being their winner. And I was like, now who's your daddy? Okay, the next question is that, um, who has left the most impact on your life? Guys, I've really had to think about this question and the one person that comes to mind, I would definitely say my high school principal, Mr. Octavius um, Mukulubati. Um, he really left the most impact in my life um, in that he recognized that I had a gift and he nurtured it. Guys, sometimes you need people to believe in you. You need people to believe in your gift. You need people to nurture your gift. Um, I mean, you can be gifted, but sometimes if there's no one to harness this gift and to properly put some water on it and all of that, sometimes you, your gift, you end up 
not doing anything with it you end up not knowing what to do with it um how did she have this biggest impact in my life guys like i said i went to camps while i was in grade 11 mr mcgonabata sent me to a dst tutuka camp with learners across the province it was so refreshing being there with learners for going to schools like it's at single science school in mafia gang the girls from Botswana commercial high school um some learners from Vastenberg, the learners from Rochester. it was so refreshing to hear how they think and the fact that they've got dreams and they want to make it in life and from there i could also be like even me i can be all of that and now for me now my dreams were not only a thing of okay i'm dreaming it was now something that can be a reality so i went back and i was so excited and i knew Knew what I wanted to do and I knew the opportunities are there I just have to take them and when I went into when I went into grade 12 he sent me back to the DST Tutuka camp and I got to meet more people I got to get more inspired I would go to workshops like um, gifted learners workshops um, they really empowered me even more and the one thing about Mr. Mukolobate as well is that he provided opportunities for us as the learners in his school and now the responsibility was left on us as the students to take those um, opportunities and run with them. How did he do this? He organized um, morning um, classes, the afternoon classes, the weekend classes, where he called other experts from in the maths and science fields to come and teach us. And you know what, sometimes I, I, I think back and I'm like, I'm so grateful to my 17 year old for grabbing those opportunities and to run with them because some learners in our school didn't want to attend the afternoon sessions, didn't want to come to the summer schools on Saturdays, uh, those winter schools and all of that. But I went, I gave myself those opportunities in my metric year, we were 53 learners. I mean, we only had two bachelor degree passes and I had one of them. I was the only learner in our school who passed with four distinctions. And when you look at our track record, I was the first student to achieve such results. And I did my metric in 2009 and there hasn't been anyone who has received those results ever since. So for me, looking back, I'm very grateful for the opportunities he provided and I'm equally grateful to my 17-year-old self for recognizing all that was given to me and taking it and running with it. So I would definitely say that, Mr. Mokolbati, say if you ever watch this video, thank you so much. You've really, really uh, shaped the person that I, was, that I became and I will eternally be grateful to you, sir. Um, the next question says, who is the best teacher you've ever had? Here again, I would definitely have to go back to my high school teachers and say my English teachers in high school, um, Mrs. Lipule, um, Mrs. Mpatlele, Mrs. Chiani, and Mrs. Mahomet, they really shaped me in, in that um, they really believed in me and my public speaking capabilities so they encouraged me to enter competitions we used to win them together we used to practice in the afternoons they really believed in my talent and the one thing that i took from public speaking is that it built my confidence i was now more confident to stand in front of people and speak i was now more confident to be like you know what I can achieve so much more because with all the trips that we went to, the competitions that I entered, the competitions that I won, even the ones that I didn't win, I learned so much from all of that and I achieved so much more. Like it was in those processes that I discovered so much about myself. So I would definitely say my high school English teachers, you guys were really the, like, the best teachers that I've ever had. So guys. Um, to make sure that this video it's not this long video that I'm um, going to deplete everyone's data I'm going to end this video right here if you enjoyed this video please do give it a thumbs up please do leave your comments down below if you have any creative video ideas that you think I should also have and um, if you haven't subscribed Please, 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 what are you still waiting for? Do subscribe and until we meet again in the next video, I love you guys.